Okay, so thank you uh, for coming, everyone. Wonderful to see you. I am uh, your moderator today. I'm Suvendrini Kakuchi. I'm a journalist, and I cover higher education. Uh, we are having uh, our um, March book break today, and book breaks are organized by the Library Committee at the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. We introduce a book that we journalists think is, are, is important, has some new research, has something new to say. So for this month, we've uh, invited uh, three scholars who's been researching and producing a book. I think it's right here. And it's about uh, diversity and inclusion in Japan. I mean, these are, these, these is the buzzword these days. Everybody's talking about how we can, um, you know, diversify or, in, you know, have inclusion in companies, in universities, in, in local governments, in governments. So uh, I think your research took several years or just a year or? Oh, yeah, here, yes. from the beginning of the center, then it took three it years or so. Right? Yeah, so we've got three years of research, and I think Japan's changed also very much over the three years. So we will be listening to our uh, guest speakers. On my immediate right is uh, Professor Alca Alcantara Lalimi, and she's the Dean of School of Management at APU Asia Pacific University. Ritsumekan University, and of course, APU is very famous for being diverse. So, of course, uh, she's with us, and with her in the same university is uh, Professor Shinohara Yoshi Yoshiki, who is Associate Professor, Director, Center for Inclusive Leadership. And in the middle, we have a uh, president of Tsuda University, um, Professor Yuko Takahashi, who's taken uh, time off a very busy schedule. After all, she's uh, the president. So thank you very much for coming today. I thought we will sh uh, start with a little bit of their chapters and introducing some of the chapters in the book. The book is, by the way, an e-book. And we will also get into a little bit about uh, e-book publishing later on. So we will listen to the three speakers on their chapters, and then a little bit of conversation with me on diversity, because um, coming from the Foreign Correspondents Club, we are very diverse, and sometimes it's not a good thing. So we will discuss a little bit on that, and then we will open the floor for question and answer. Thank you. So who would like to go first? Uh, yes, OK. Go first, out of country, sir. I thought we we're here to chat. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, so um, thank you so much for this opportunity to talk about our book, Diversity and Inclusion in Japan. And I think all of us here share the same mission, really, of of having more conversation about diversity and inclusion. I know there are challenges associated with it, but we do believe that there are more opportunities associated with it. So this book is just, our intention is just really to start the conversation about diversity and inclusion in Japan. So in my case, so I, I've written, um, I, I'm, I've, I co-authored three chapters of the book, uh, but the, the, the chapter that I would like, the objective of those chapters, again, to, to have a good understanding of what's happening about diversity and inclusion in the business sector. So the book covers the business sector and also then the higher education sector. And we do believe that these two forces, these two pillars of our society could actually make the change, could make a strong movement to, to for us to have more progress about diversity and inclusion in Japan. So the chapter that I wrote was about um, DNI across um, industries in Japan. So the objective was just then to um, to uh, understand how, what's the current situation of DNI across industries in Japan, because in, by by understanding whether um, there are differences across industries, and then it could call for policies that would be specific to um, industries, because indus industries face different challenges. Um, they um, they face different pressures. Different um, they they have different institutions, different norms. 
And by making that point that indus the industries would have different challenges, different norms, and then maybe we could come up with, with more um, better or e effective policy that would encourage industries to promote um, DNI and more industries promoting DNI, and then the more advancement um, we could we could have. So that was the focus of one chapters that um, um, I wrote, and I th and for um, Shinohara Sensei and Takashi Sensei could also please go ahead. It. Okay, uh, thank you so much. So uh, in uh, and on other two chapters, we focus on the Japanese uh, uh, companies' policies. So uh, as you know, that the uh, Prime Minister Abe promote the uh, women mix and uh, as a uh, national strategy. So uh, company also respond uh, the government policy. So they start to develop a uh, department to promote diversity and inclusion. And actually number, for example, uh, female executives is a little bit uh, becomes higher and higher, but it's still low level uh, in the world uh, if we compare with uh, other countries, uh, especially uh, Japanese uh, uh, ratio of uh, female executives is very low, but still Japanese companies try to improve it. But and we, we found some such kind of uh, progress in Japanese companies, but uh, and also, but we also know that it's very surface level. Or for example, it's easy, not easy, but uh, they can actually change some behavior, but uh, it's really difficult to change their mind. Uh, some companies force some female workers to behave as male uh, workers. So even though uh, it's really first step to change the Japanese companies, but still uh, we need to uh, improve uh, that uh, corporate diversity. And another thing is a uh, another chapter focus on the performance. So especially some uh, analysts really like the topic about the uh, financial performance. So people think that the whether promoting diversity inclusion can improve the corporate performance and our answer or our result is that only age diversity are related to the uh, corporate performance. So if the company's age, di age diversity increase, uh, corp corporate performance also increase. But for example, uh, it means that if companies have more 30, only 30s or 40s employees, it means that their performance will decrease. Uh, so, but other measurement, uh, such as foreigners or disabilities, diversities are not related to the performance. So uh, through this uh, research, we also concluded that uh, promoting diversity is important, but it not always improves their corporate performance. And we need to go beyond the diversity, right? So diversity focuses more on the difference among peoples. We are different culture. We are different nationality. We focus on the difference, but we what we need is to increase them as a member of the organization or member of the corporation. So uh, we believe that we in Japan, m many Japanese company go to the next step: diversity to the inclusion. This is what we saw through the chapters. And Takas Sensei. Uh, uh, in her chapter, she focused on about the uh, Suda University uh, female reader, right? And can you explain about it also? My chapter basically uh, focused on one uh, women leader who was actually the uh, fourth president of Tsuda University. Her name is Fujita Taki, or Taki Fujita. She uh, was a suffragist before the war, and she was quite active in women's movement. And uh, she was the first president of Association of University Women. And so she tried to develop the field of higher education for women. And uh, not only in Japan, but also uh, across the world. And 
when in 1971 she had a terrible car accident and she got uh, para half paralyzed but even after that she was quite active so she emphasized the importance of uh, elevating uh, the women status who are working in the healthcare field and also at a low wages and also uh, giving the opportunity for those uh, who are disabled like her. And after she got this uh, terrible car accident, she attended Women's Congress in Mexico as, uh, as the representative of Japanese government. So she went uh, in a wheelchair. So that's why I chose her as a main figure in my chapter. And uh, when I was a graduate student, I was reading uh, Tsuda Umeko's letters in, in our archives. The Tsuda Umeko is the founder of Tsuda College, Tsuda University now. And uh, at that time, Fujita Taki gave a lecture in a uh, class, in a course called Sogo General, in our uh, students' uh, plan uh, of the lecturers. And she got invited to this class. And I happened to be in that lecture, and uh, I was so impressed by what she talked about her life. And uh, so I went to her house to uh, interview her, and I had this ca old cassette tape, so-called. You know, I used a little tape recorder at that time. That was like late 1980s. So I found out, uh, I discovered this cassette tapes, and I tra uh, transcribed, transcribed this, maybe two tapes, and uh, I was able to translate, and I mean, actually, Pierce Sensei, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Pierce uh, translated the excerpts that I chose uh, from this uh, interview. And also, we had a big symposium on Fujitataki, all the uh, women leaders who worked with her and for her got together and talked about Fujitataki. And we also had taped, the conversation was taped, so I transcribed that symposium and uh, translated some excerpts so that uh, Fujitataki's voice can be heard to the uh, English-speaking world. And also, uh, those women leaders who worked with Fujitataki and uh, worked for Fujitataki, their voices can be also heard, not only in Japan, but uh, also across the world. That's why I uh, chose Fujitataki as a uh, theme of topic of my chapter. Okay. I was just, um, just to sum up what you said, is basically you were talking about um, that diversity does help corporate performance. Did you find that in your research? Can't, I can't tell. Uh, yes, uh, we found uh, some aspects, not, but not all aspects of diversity are related to the finan financial performance. It means that the promoting diversity is very tough to connect with their performance. And it's actually to, uh, true because the other studies also found that some said that promoting diversity has a negative uh, to the their performance and others said that positive because uh, you know that if, if you promote diversity, it means that you have more chance to have a conflict, right? And it sometimes it have uh, damage to the performance. But of course, uh, diversity is important to innovation. So there are pros and cons. So and in our case, just only age diversity can be related to the performance. 
Yes, if can I you add yes, to that? If I may add on that, I think there are two reasons that we, um, uh, we, we think why only age diversity was found to have significant eff effect on financial performance. Wha one is that the other dimensions of diversity, they were still rather really marginal. The percentage of people, uh, like for mm. example, um, people with dis disabilities, hardly they meet the, the required 2% in their com company. So mm. then really it's just, the number is just too small. And in also um, um, in terms of um, gender diversity as well, like even though they, they have high number of women, but what kind of roles those women have in their company. And so, um, so that's one reason. And again, the second reason is, is because we focus only when we, when we analyze the effect of diversity on performance, we focus only on diversity measure, but not on inclusion measure. Mm. Because we are yet to come with an inclusion measure that would allow us to see what's happening across <coughs> companies, across industries. So the message of the chapter is that if we really want to have um, positive impact from diversity, then we need to move the discussion from diversity to um, inclusion, which is actually consistent with previous um, findings as well. The, the many um, studies have conducted actually an analysis of um, effect of diversity on performance in different contexts. But the, the results have been mixed. Some would show positive, some would show negative, some would show no effect. And then those scholars then that are studying about inclusion, the problem is because we're missing inclusion in the equation. It's mm. only when inclusion exis exists that diversity would actually lead yeah. to positive impact um, yeah. uh, on organizations. So, so again, our, I think our findings just also then support that view that we should have inclusion so that we could leverage and the power of diversity in organizations. Yeah. W would you like to make a comment on inclusion? Uh, well, uh, yes, I would think that if uh, there are several books, uh, all of our books are connected to this book on uh, women in leadership roles. Yeah, the mic. Not for this. Yeah, okay. Not for this book. But for another book, I conducted research uh, on women university presidents, women uh, presidents. And in Japan, uh, women president, num the number of Jap uh, women presidents are so small, like about 13%, including national and prefectural, public and private universities. So, uh, I know we do have a lot of uh, problems mm -hmm. with diversity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to say that uh, I am uh, the 11th president mm -hmm. and at Tsuda University, mm -hmm. uh, 10 out of 11 are women presidents. And our uh, history is we are celebrating right now 120th anniversary, but still, we, we uh, our uh, predecessors, uh, past presidents and former presidents uh, made this history, but uh, for example, mm -hmm. like your, un your, your university value, mm -hmm. values uh, diversity but you have never produced a women president. So we, you, we have to ask why you cannot include women presidents to your university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, it maybe. especially one of the important thing is that uh, to uh, promote the inclusion, we need to give a chance to, especially uh, for female uh, to, make them a president, right? And it's a matter. We think that sometimes we use diversity and inclusion as the same words, but it's a really different meaning, right? So uh, to APU uh, is one of the diverse university, but we are still uh, need to promote for inclusion. And it's what Takai-sensei said. Uh, it's also important for us to have a female president? To start with, asking this kind of question is sort of taboo in Japan. You are not supposed to ask that kind of question. 
But I'm not trying to offend APU, but I'm trying to open our, you know, perspective. So I heard that Alcantara Sensei is the first woman dean yeah. in the history of APU. Mm -hmm. So in the school of management. In the school. <laughs> First dean in our school of management. Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but uh, you know, as a group, uh, study group, we conducted uh, university presidents, and we can tell the Japanese situation is so bleak. So we have to change that. And how can we change that? So we cannot ask that kind of questions in this book. But uh, that's very important in the field of higher education to promote women's participation in v various uh, fields, I think. Yes, thank you. I think we are, we're trying, at least, in uh, uh, the former prime minister's womenomics and things like that. But before we go into that, I just want to a little bit more on inclusion. So um, uh, Professor um, Shinohara was saying that inclusion also means making people feel part of the company? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yes. yes. But Japan is very good at that, I think. Everybody is like not only feeling part of the company, but they feel they are the company is it sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I'm an outsider, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so how would you explain that a so bit more? Uh, so the, there are two important uh, concepts related to the inclusion. First one is the belongingness, what you said. So Japanese companies uh, uh, or Japanese workers are really loves their companies, especially in the Showa era, right? So they work hard for their companies. They, their belongingness to the company is very high, but it's not enough to achieve the inclusion. Another aspect of inclusion is uniqueness. So if employees uh, cannot use their unique skill to the company, it, does, it doesn't mean that it, the company is inc uh, inclusive. Right. So, for example, uh, Japanese companies uh, ask employees to uh, job rotation. Right. So they move a lot of place. Right. But some employees think that I have a special skill about, like, uh, for example, marketing, and I want to uh, work uh, as an uh, analyst for marketing like that. But sometimes company asks him or her to move other department. So it means that c Japanese companies, uh, l how can I say, they uh, discourage uh, those workers. So inclusion is not only related to the belongingness, but uniqueness. And I think that uniqueness is, uh, the per uh, aspects of uniqueness is lack in many Japanese companies. This is my just my thought. That's so true. Yes. Um, so when we speak about inclusion, it's not it's, it's not just about being a member of an organization. It's more of how are you being recognized as a person, not just a member of the organization, but as an individual, and that you are being valued for your individuality, for the uniqueness. You feel comfortable um, showing up for work for who you are, and not for you know how peop uh, how similar you are with with other um, people at work so it's very important that we understand that those two at least those two dimensions of inclusion about um, belongingness and then also then about uniqueness yeah okay okay there was a, just another aspect that I want to throw up before we open up the floor you were talking about the Japanese perspective of diversity and inclusion. And there was, I think you especially mentioned in your introduction about the uchi and the soto. And you know, that kind of, you know, how do we kind of have a Japanese perspective to this debate of increasing or not increasing diversity? Yeah, uh, especially, yeah, uchi and soto is a very Japanese ca uh, cultural characteristics, right? And uchi means that people fear they are member of the small groups, right? And soto means that the out, uh, outside of the groups. And unfortunately, in Japanese uh, words, uh, foreigners mean the gaikokujin, and we use the soto uh, as a kanji, right? It means that 
I don't know, but I'm not a uh, linguistic uh, uh, scholar, but uh, in the language perspective, uh, we Japanese traditionally separate Japanese and others, right? So this kind of things has a cultural background of Japanese, I think. Uh, and inclusion means that we need to include, mean, mean that we need to uh, promote every uchi uh, or member, right? So we need to consider how we can do it. Uh, this is uh, my thought. I, my research is not so <laughs> related to theirs, but the fact that Fujita Taki was sent to uh, Mexico for this Women's Congress in 1975 as a delegate of the Japanese government. She was in a wheelchair, but uh, she represented the Japanese government and, and she uh, was supported by numerous women. So that's a very uh, good example of inclusion. Mm -hmm. I uh, was so overwhelmed when I heard about how she got re rehabilitated and uh, she uh, participated in uh, women's uh, activities and movement even after the accident. Mm -hmm. So that's really empowering story for me. I was, uh, uh, my age was 29 back then. So very inspi inspiring example to me. Regarding the Japanese perspective on diversity and inclusion, let me just then maybe then share. Um, so I attended this um, forum um, about Innovative City Forum, and it was actually mentioned there that um, so Japanese companies they hire people, including our students. Actually, they hire, hire them because they're unique, they're creative, they're different. But then when they join the company. Cookie or yomenai, like you know, they're different from others. Then they, they, you know, they they find I don't, they naturally find ways to make them feel and think like them, and but they do recognize that that, that problem. And I think the more people recognizing that problem, the better. You're hiring them for y their uniqueness, but you're not letting them to be unique and contribute to your company. And again, that's a missed opportunity. You have them already but you're not allowing them to be part of your um, um, organization. And I think that's just really an, a missed opportunity for, for many um, um, companies, not just, not just Japanese companies, because inclusion is not just a Japanese issue, it's a universal issue. I think all countries um, are, are still, I think, um, um, faced with, with, with challenges, and some are still not recognizing the importance of it. But then again, I think we're missing out a lot of things when we don't um, value um, inclusion in our organization. But overall, in your research, you found that Japanese companies, universities, they want to uh, increase diversity, is it? And they want to be more inclusive. Did you find that overwhelming support for that? Like in our um, in the chapters that we wrote, we actually use a longitudinal like several years of data of Japanese companies, and so we we tracked how they have changed over the years. So there are dimensions of diversity that we could see that have improved, like for example, in terms of gender diversity, gender participation, but still the progress is actually minimal, marginal. Um, other dimensions of diversity, such as again, like um, people with disabilities and then foreign um, employees, the number is just so small. And even we, we, we it's hard for us, to, it, we, we weren't able to find significant progress on, on those dimensions of diversity because diversity is very multidimensional. And, and, and thus, I think we, we need to be able then to see what kind of diversity we are having in our organization and what kind of diversity we are not having in our organization. 
Yeah, and I also I, w I want to add one more thing is that the Japanese uh, promotion of diversity is more strat strategical perspective, right? Uh, diversity and inclusion, for example, in the U.S., it's related to the more escarism, right? Uh, because they have more issue related to the minorities. But in Japanese case, uh, Jap number of Japanese is decreasing. So it means that companies need more workforce, right? So first, they f find a solution. We can uh, focus females to work right, as an important workforce. So that's why uh, for, uh, Prime Minister Abe promote diversity, especially female diversity for the companies. And nowadays, actually, companies really wants to hire more uh, foreign uh, students or employees because also it's a very good chance to hire them and expand their business to the uh, uh, as international. So uh, I think that the Japanese uh, diversity and inclusion is more related to the strategy of uh, Japan itself and the company themselves. Yes, and being from from a female university, do you find a change in the female students? I think uh, women students are more, I should say, ambitious nowadays. Would you agree? Yes, they are more ambitious. And uh, they are more uh, open-minded and they would like to explore more, and they're more outgoing. Mm -hmm. They would like to go abroad. So um, they would like to exper experiment more. So that's a good sign, I think. But uh, I don't know about that Uchi Soto. Mm -hmm. That can reinforce the Japanese stereotype, mm -hmm. can be. I mean, I'm not supposed to say something like this, but it, it, it can be uh, a bit, uh, uh, that's, that's the good word, but touchy. It, because uh, it's been said so, so many times, but we have various Japanese people now. Because some Japanese people are uh, raised in, uh, not in Japan, and totally, uh, you know, uh, uh, English, can, English or other languages can be their first language. So we do have uh, those Japanese people too. So that, that Uchi and Soto are uh, very kind of like, Showa, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. It's really style, mm. and I don't know if we can use that uh, current situation, right? Right. Yeah. In in na in twenty first century, because so many like Japanese writers are writing abroad, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or uh, artists, Japanese artists mm -hmm. are working not only in Japan but are also yeah. abroad, so that uh, you are talking about very domestic. Yes, very, yes. very traditional Showa company. Right. <laughs> right. So I have a, a, a question about mm -hmm. a bit mm -hmm. about what you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that uh, it's uh, become a bit improving. Situation, uh, I believe situation is improving, but still some companies have mind of Uchi and Soto uh, really uh, they don't want to change uh, their style or management, and it's really problematic. But of course, some company has tried to change their mind, and they become more open, and they uh, allow every employee to be more innovative, more unique, and uh, to uh, for companies. Yeah, so it's like a. Mm, now it's a very time to change ma for many companies. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit about your research. I mean, how d how did you do your research? Surveys or, you know, like any any, just a little introduction to the research formats. So, so in terms of methodology, I think all chapters actually use different methodologies. Like um, 
um, in our chapters, we use uh, longitudinal data, like a panel data of um, of companies over the years. So I think it was about like 20, if I, tw about 20 years of, of data of, 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 Jap uh, of companies in Japan. So we track their, um, and we actually name it diversity and inclusion orientation because we are yet to come up with a measure of inclusion. So we just really found, identify some of those um, descriptions, like things that they do that would um, describe their um, DNI orientation, for example, having flexible work system or um, uh, women participation, women empowerment. Do they have departments that are, um, that are in charge of diversity inclusion in their company? So some indicators of their orientation, but not necessarily measuring um, inclusion, which probably would be our next project coming up with, <laughs> with an inclusion measure that could be compared across companies and across organizations. So that's one measure that we, uh, we use, I mean, one method that we use using um, panel data, secondary data. In one chapter, which is about um, um, Vietnamese entrepreneurs in Japan, we use um, interviews, so more qualitative. And because I think different research questions would require different research approach, and Takahashi Sensei also, as she explained beautifully earlier, like she used a different uh, methodology as well. Right? In the tapes. Yeah. Yes. Transcription of um, tapes. Um, tapes, yeah. And uh, yeah, just a little bit about the Vietnamese companies. Do they have, what do they, I mean, what is, are their companies more diverse or? the Vietnamese companies in Japan? Um, you mean uh, Vietnamese um, entrepreneurs. So the, the chapter focuses on how, uh, what are those um, um, challenges faced by um, Vietnamese entrepreneurs? How, what is the, like how do they see themselves as entrepreneurs in Japan? How do they identify opportunities in Japan? And clearly it was network. Um, network was a crucial resource for them to become an entrepreneur in Japan. And those who are, um, who, who, um, who think that they are su successful as entrepreneurs. These are Vietnamese um, entrepreneurs who understand themselves also as Vietnamese, like them being unique kind of entrepreneurs, but then being able to mobilize their resources in Japan and also they're able to um, um, have closer connection with, with their Japanese counterparts. And so again, it's, it's, um, and I, it, and it describes in what we talk about inclusion. They know who they are, and they are able to engage and then um, connect with um, with others um, in their community. And so facilitating that kind of um, building connection among immigrant entrepreneurs in Japan could actually facilitate more foreigners being also or becoming entrepreneurs um, um, in Japan. Okay. Okay, I think we can uh, open up for questions from the floor. And then we can go back a again for a little bit of discussion. Any questions? Yeah, in Japanese or English? No, p no. It's your choice. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, can we have a mic here, please? Oh, yes. Can you? C sorry. Can you come to the mic microphone over here? So sorry. Identify yourself, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Masat Mori, a professor at Toyo University, where we have female president currently, and we are proud of it. <laughs> uh, having said that, I have uh, one question, and I study uh, corporate governance, and um, um, about uh, correlation between corporate performance and the number of uh, female directors at the board. I don't believe there is a positive or even negative correlation because many companies introduce female directors, not because they want to, but uh, it appeals better to, uh, especially to uh, institutional investors. So what do you think about it? And also, uh, do you think it's gonna change in the near future? That's my question. Yes, thank you so much for your question. I totally agree that the to improve the financial performance, the number of female uh, executives is not matter, I think, because it's more, nowadays it becomes more symbolic, right? So it, the important thing is that the how those female uh, executives can provide a different perspective to the director uh, boards. And so in the past, 
they are may be correlated with the performance, but nowadays the effect will be different, and uh, because other companies can easy to imitate, right? So if they uh, other company find some uh, candidate of uh, uh, executives, they can just hire, uh, but nothing changed, right? So I totally agree that the uh, uh, the number of female uh, executive will not. Uh, be uh, related to the uh, financial performance of future. Um, I have a feeling that uh, it may be um, um, meaningful whether, I mean, if you can differentiate uh, female directors, uh, statutory uh, board level, and uh, maybe executive levels, non statutory levels. Yeah. I, I, yes, I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Takai Sensei, do you have a comment, please? Because you are at the top of the board. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, nowadays, numerous uh, executives are from the outside. <laughs> the purpose uh, for the company is uh, to increase the ratio mm -hmm. of women directors. Mm -hmm. They are not so interested in uh, I mean, they are interested in uh, training uh, their own employees to be uh, directors, but still, right now, they don't have enough uh, women executives. So they try to look for women executives outside, and they don't know the companies. They, they might, some, some people, some ex women executives do know the companies really well, but some might not know the companies so well. So that can be the uh, issue. I agree with you. <laughs> so, but still, still though, it's, I, I feel important to have women executives. Yeah. It could be the first step then, huh? Yes. Yeah. Right okay, now, to change. Mm, it's right. right. Mm -hmm. Any, yeah. Did you find should, anything on that? give up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, right, right now, I think, uh, as, as I think you mentioned, it's we need women to be there. It's right. it's right now. It's more of about representation, right. and again, again, it's the what part of diversity and inclusion. But actually, what we need to work more from now is the how part. Mm. So now that they are on the board, now what's next? Yeah. If you stop the, you know, stop uh, counting how many they are and not actually considering how those women are contributing the company, then you will never see any impact on your performance or on your organization. So it's really the how part of diversity that I think would matter more from, from, from now. And, and it's uh, the question about where will it change? I want, I'm, a <laughs> um, I'm really very hopeful that it would change. Um, and I think that's the reason why we started this book and that's the reason why we have the Centers for Inclusive Leadership and that's the reason why also that we collaborate because we believe it will change. Of course, it might take a while, <laughs> but it would change. Um, and, and I think now we see more discussion about diversity and inclusion um, in, in Japan as well. So I think there's, um, um, there's hope that you know things would change and, and improve the more people joining this kind of conversation especially the ones who can actually make policy changes and, and impact on their organization i think the movement would would go faster any other questions i mean i'm still interested in this japanese perspective and perhaps we can also just take the things that are obvious, like Japan is an aging society, and you don't have enough people to work. So I if we just take that aspect, how do you think diversity and inclusion will progress? Is that a question for everyone? Yeah. For everyone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think that's so true because um, um, I think people, I think uh, marginalized people, underrepresented people, they are untapped, we, if I may call them, resources of our society. Sometimes I feel like if half of, why would you just make half of your population 
hold all the responsibility of progress. Th and the other half, not so. I think that's a waste of opportunity. And so, um, and if Japan's aging um, um, society, and then, then having more, even actually within Japanese society, right? You still, Japan still has um, underrepresented and marginalized people. Plus, it's aging society. Let's work with um, having those underrepresented, marginalized people on board, and then be more open then to different kinds of, of diversity, and, and then having more, for example, foreign talents um, being able to work in, in, in Japan. And so um, I think that um, that's one solution that um, um, I we agree could have. with you. Yeah. <laughs> totally. And do you think, you know, because your management course and as dean, you have lots of different nationality students work. Is that helpful or how does it go with the Japanese students? I believe there's really like value in um, being in an environment that is diverse, that like very um, different, like multicultural, because that's, um, that's how you could actually see that there are different ways of doing things. There are different ways of thinking about things because uh, we are all different. We see different problems and we, we come up also with different solutions. And if you are in that kind of environment that it becomes more natural for you then oh, there's another way of doing it. Oh, it's different in their country. It's different from, from Japan. So you can easily you get exposed to those differences um, in your daily life. And then that becomes your, your resource. That becomes your, your tool. And then you're more open and welcomed to differences. And Takahashi Sensei just actually shared her experience in the United States, right, Sensei? Many years in the uh, States when I was in my 20s and early 30s and uh, I uh, always had a roommate until I started writing my dissertation. But I feel that that decade was the foundation of my, uh, my adult life. So that was very important. But you were talking about one student that uh, who said, uh, no more, you no more diversity. So <laughs> I, I, so I we yeah. have to be open yeah. to that yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of so reality too. Yeah. So I, should, uh, I, I have a course for in, uh, Japanese students in APU, and the APU is very diverse. Uh, so half Japanese, half uh, international students. So I ask students so, uh, in the future, do you want to work with such a multicultural teams or multinational teams with? Uh, foreigners and uh, s students said that the uh, professor it's enough at APU. So it means that promoting diversity is it's not easy way, right? Because uh, we have different values, we have different thoughts, and sometimes we need to debate. Con there are a lot of conflict, right? So it's not the easy way, but but if we how can I say accomplish something with such kind of different people. The achievement is more much greater than uh, just uh, domestic students com accomplished. So uh, I believe that we we believe that uh, the importance of diversity. But uh, I also need to tell students that it's not the easy way. But we need to still uh, invest uh, students push push them to make themselves diversity. Yeah. That's so true, and I think yeah, I think it's 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 important for us to um, recognize that there are challenges associated with it as well. It's not all about you know, um, you know, shining stars and glamorous about diversity. There are challenges associated with it. Why? Because human human beings we are naturally inclined to communicate and engage with people like us because it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to communicate with people who speak the same language or think the same as you, right? But then you never get, I think the chances of you being surprised and discovering new things would be less likely if you just keep talking with people who think like you, mm -hmm. right? And but so I think that's something that uh, I think we have to recognize that we need to make conscious effort when we are um, in, a, in a diverse environment, if we would really want to achieve um, inclusion um, and 
there we need to make again I have to repeat it again we need to make that conscious effort yeah yeah did you have like here comments like because Japan's post-war economic miracle is also supposed to be because the country was so homogeneous and everybody moved together so why should we change you know were there any 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 questions like that or did you find a big difference between big companies and small companies in accepting diversity or promoting inclusion so the question is why why change why move why why be more diverse if if yeah why it's a difficult question right? no, well, no the answers to me the answers are clear if you want to be Maybe some companies think they're good now, but if you want to be great, then do DNI. Mm -hmm. That's just my very, um, um, I'm really very, um, I think, passionate about diversity and inclusion. That it's not, it's not a weather question anymore. It's a how question now. Like there are different dimensions of diversity. Even people who look similar, they're still very diverse. And so even let's say, if even let's say for those companies who only have Japanese employees, it doesn't mean that you don't have diversity in your organization. Each Japanese is also different; it's unique. It's just that you need to find a way how you could actually leverage the uniqueness among those people. And so it's again, it's it's we have to change if we want to be better, if we want to be great. Maybe some companies are happy, but if you want to be happier, if you want to be better, if you want to be great, then DNI is something that I think we need to be committed to. <laughs> yeah, yes. No question about it. Any questions? Okay, I was just, uh, I, I think what's happening now is, uh, especially in universities, because so many female students now, right? Like they have mo half, th half the total student population, right? Still, we don't, uh, I think uh, we have more male students ah. undergraduate level. I see. 10% difference. Okay. But uh, graduate student, master's course, the gap gets wider, especially when you go to the graduate student. And PhD student, uh, a bit more. More men. Mm -hmm. mm. But especially, uh, Male students go to graduate school. Much more male students go to graduate school really? compared to uh, women students. Ah, is that correct? And yeah. uh, it's like alligator's mouth, open mouth. Not, uh, when you are undergraduate student, that gap is small, mm. but it gets wider and wider. Ah. Lecturer, assistant professors, associate professors, and professors, it gets wider, ah. and then vice presidents, it's, it gets much wider, and presidents, wide, widest. Oh, I see. Do you have any vice presidents in your universe, women uh, vice presidents? Yes, we currently have one. Um, one? Yes, we have um, Professor um, Lian. Mm -hmm. and but still, uh, like overall, the ratio is very, very uh, small. I mean, women's ratio is so small, mm -hmm. vice presidents and presidents. I see. So Kawano, Gin Professor Ginko Kawano wrote a beautiful picture to uh, demonstrate this uh, gap. gap. It, when you go higher and higher in the university from undergraduate student to master's graduate students, PhD student, uh, Jokyo, assistant professor and lecturer Koshi and then Jun Kyoju, associate professor, full professor, gets wider and wider. It's just so unbelievably. Mm. Gap, the gap is, gets wider. Mm -hmm. So we have to close mm. the alligator's mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Any ideas how we can close it? <laughs> How can we close? Like, for example, like companies, right? So they have employed women um, as their employees. I think managers need then to really understand what kind of work do they give women at work? Do they give them work that would be recognized? Do they give them work that would 
have them be promoted to a higher, higher level? Do they give them chances to, um, to grow um, and, and be promoted in a higher position in the organization? Mm. And that's, uh, that's actually what inclusion is about. Mm. If you're just hiring them, recruiting them, being a member of, of your organization, mm. fine, you achieve diversity, but you haven't achieved yet inclusion. Mm. So I think, be, again, being more conscious about mm. what kind of job, what kind of projects or responsibilities mm. you give to women, especially at the early stage of their mm. career. Um, and I think that could also make a difference. And I think the BNI issue is not just a job of corporations, actually. Mm. There's a lot of, I think, a lot of systemic issues that we need to address as a whole, mm. um, as a community and as a nation, like how schools are operating. Are schools as assuming that only one, only the father works at home uh, and then I mean, works, and then the mom stays at home. Like, are, are they making that assumption when they are encouraging um, families to mm. participate in school events? So what kind of assumptions we are having right now that, um, that we need to, to check so that we can have more participation from, from those people that have been marginalized or been underrepresented? Yeah, but with less women marrying, mm. you know, or marrying later, do you think that uh, things will change? I mean, it, it is going towards change. I think we have to ask why. Why is that happening? Why, why the trend is hap uh, you know, coming like that? If less women are marrying or less um, or having kids, what are the problems? Why is that? So. For example, I, I just read an article about why is that very uh, few women um, are in the administrative position. Mm -hmm. Well, they say it's because, um, um, again, um, the long work hours, mm -hmm. right? It's one reason um, that I forgot the other reasons I mentioned. So, ag so how do we evaluate performance at, at work? If it's about the number of hours you contributed, then mm -hmm. you, you're making people choices. It's either you spend more time mm. at work and spend more time your family, but it's not how, we, it's not the only way we measure mm. performance. I think we need to have different ways of measuring performance and evaluating performance of, of people at, at work. So I think again, those, again, having, uh, and just like what Akashi Sensei sa said earlier, asking the why questions. Mm. I think that would um, that that would lead us, I think, to um, to solutions to those fundamental um, problems we're having. I think uh, the family system in Japan is patriarchal, mm. still. Yeah. Yeah. That's one simple reason why uh, Japanese women <laughs> don't go for marriage, right? <laughs> we have to change that nature. Mm. Uh, women cannot. I mean. Uh, Either men or women cannot choose their last name, for example, still, so that it's not so uh, functional. Mm, mm, mm. So policymakers really need to th rethink about the nature of family system, yeah. mm -hmm. which does not suit mm. contemporary Japanese women especially, and men too. For mm -hmm. men, maybe yeah. working hours and all those. But for men, too, it's too patriarchal. They mm. are expected to be breadwinners, mm. and they don't like that. Mm. So we really need to rethink about mm. the family system. Mm. Okay. For, to answer your question. Yes, yes. Mm. So it's not going to help. No getting married later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's okay. laughs> yeah, and in the gender roles, I think, you know, fixating what kind of roles, what kind of professions, what kind of career a woman would have or a man would have, mm. I think that's also, I think, a very critical um, um, problem that we have that as if your life has been fixed. Mm. <laughs> because, uh, you know, and, and but again, showing different paths and so when, 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 when people ask us, for our students, female students, you know, men, there are different paths and, and it's not just about your gender. You could, you, you could, there are many different paths that you could take and I think the more people 
for example, Dr. Hutchison there, and <coughs> including them myself here, showing that there are different paths that you can take, then I think there, um, I think we will have more um, people who have been underrepresented um, be more represented in our society. Did you find a difference in your research between the type of companies that want to diverse and are going to be go forward in, like for example, IT companies, I think. Are they more open to diversity and inclusiveness compared to the old Japanese big companies or rural companies in urban? Did you find any differences? So in one chapter, we focus on the cross-industry analysis. So for example, the finance sector, the finance industry has more stronger DNI orientation compared to energy sector and automotive sector. And so there are differences across um, in industry. So if, again, um, some, and finance industry, why? Because they are, um, they are exposed. They are more pressured by different stakeholders and they rely more on external stakeholders than other industries. So then if finance industry uh, um, can increase it naturally because of the norms of their industry, then we need to have a different approach to other industries to promote DNI. And we don't have the solution yet, but again, just recognizing that if we would like to promote DNI across industries, then we need to find different ways um, to promote it because again, different industries have different no norms and expectations. What about urban and, and outside? Did you find any difference? Yeah. That we didn't do that analysis. No. No. Mm -hmm. I think we can take Ito san. Yes, please. Ano. Ano. So, motite, Murai san. Yes. So, angete. I'm Takeshi Hara, associate member of this club. Thank you for your heated discussion. <coughs> this is uh, my answer to your question, but uh, looking at the notice of today's uh, book, review, book break, it has immediately occurred to me that uh, Japan or Japanese society lacks diversity. I really don't know the real situation with respect to the diversity of Japanese university. So based on this uh, understanding, let me make my personal and parochial views. Uh, in my uh, arbitrary personal view, Japan or Japanese society, by and large, are afraid to call spade a spade over critical issues. In other words, simply speaking, Japanese people are uh, lack Japanese people lacks the courage to be different from others in some realms in comparison to other country, countries. That's the reason we don't have, we have difficulty to have uh, ideal diversity in any society or or organization or community uh, because uh, in my opinion uh, we are afraid of being ostracized from the organization or community to which we belong that's my comment okay. thank you thank you very much yes was yeah yes so any Aska do you have Aska is from yeah, Copenhagen who's a very multicultural <laughs> society but yeah, we, when we were having dinner we talked about Japanese children mm. uh, 
when they enter uh, elementary school, first grade, second grade, third grade, and until maybe fourth or fifth grade, they say, hi, 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 hi. They raise a hand in a very positive manner. But probably after the sixth grade and in junior high school, they no longer raise their hands so in a positive way there. Because they are afraid of asking questions which might upset or make one's classmates surprised mm -hmm. or di being different, so that they tend, to, tend not to ask questions to teachers. But after class, they go to the teacher and ask questions. Mm -hmm. So they, they are engaging in their own ways, but uh, they are afraid of asking questions. So that's Japanese still. Japanese children. So we need to change that. We talked about yeah, yeah. that because they are afraid of, like you are saying, mm. ostracized or mm. picked on mm. by uh, one's classmates. Yeah, I also uh, agree with uh, Takashi Sensei. So we also uh, shared about my experience. Uh, my experience. So I teach uh, some lectures in Japanese and sometimes in English, and students are. Japanese courses, students are Japanese, others are foreigners, uh, foreign students, international students. So their attitudes are totally different. So it's difficult to stop uh, discussion in the uh, international students' class, but in Japanese ca a students' case, we need to encourage them to speak up. So it's totally different, but it doesn't mean that the Japanese student doesn't have their own ideas. Right. But they just hesitate to, for example, raise their hands. So we need to have a different approach to uh, encourage them to uh, discuss, uh, discuss about some topics. So it's a little bit uh, cultural or, I don't know, educational issue, but, uh, but at least we still want them to speak up <laughs> in front of, in the public. If they are asked to write their reaction in a piece of paper, then they write yeah, they something write. very good. Yeah, especially Japanese said. students can write more than international students. Yeah, but they are afraid of speaking up. Mm. So we need to train our students to speak up much more. Okay, thank you very much. So let me conclude that in a positive way, that definitely women women would be. Um, the, the path is open for women to take. Of course, there are cultural barriers, but we are on the path to more women for various reasons. I mean, aging society, lack of uh, Japanese workers, various. And also, I just hope that for the foreigners coming to Japan, which is another very important aspect of inclusion, whether, uh, you know, whether, you know, whether they would also be holding important. And again, there are differences between the sectors, the energy sector, the finance sector, is what our conclusion. So just a little bit. This is an e-book, is it? Mm -hmm. So it's available free. Mm -hmm. And published by Ritsume Khan, or? No, published by Ludwig, right? Yeah. Ludwig. Yeah, right. But you spent... You yeah, uh, yeah, so the, the idea of making it open access that so that it would be more accessible to people, everyone, even high school students could, or elementary students actually could download, could download the book and have um, uh, a copy of it. Because I, I think, again, our objective is just really to have more people talking about it and taking actions toward DNI. So we want it to be more accessible, and so we made it open access. available and if I ha if there are no more questions anybody else I just would like yes, to share please. the motto of Tsuda University yes. to conclude our discussion yes empowering women to make a difference in English mm. in Japanese henkaku o ninau josei de aru koto yes i think so definitely so we are on the path uh, women need to make a difference yes but not only women but international students and people mm. need to make a difference yeah. in this society. Yes, I think we're at a very exciting and important time. And so the research, uh, and I think you also noted that there's not enough research on this subject, right? 
So I think uh, we have to have more of this. And the press club is also a place that has different uh, nationalities, which reminds me, uh, we want to thank you for your evening. And you will become an honorary member for any year. So please use the club for more conversation. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please give our speakers. A So you can exchange Meishi if you want later on, and thank you very much for coming today.